living in the now, just, you know, kind of coasting by, not thinking about like, what's it going to be like if we bring a kid into this kind of poor financial picture? And that really triggered in my mind as well. We got to do something. This show is dedicated to helping you strengthen your family tree and live financially free. Welcome to the Marriage, Kids, and Money podcast, everybody. This is Andy Hill, and today we're talking about that moment, that tipping point, that flash in our lives when we decide it's time to become debt-free. For me and my wife, Nicole, it was when we learned we were going to be parents. For some, it's when they get married. And others... When they simply just get fed up with owing people money. (laughs) Today, I've invited a couple who recently eliminated debt from their lives once and for all. Reagan and Ryan Whitlock are here with me today. This young couple recently paid off 40,000 bucks of debt in eight short months. And we're going to find out their motivation for crushing this debt so others can find their moment, their reason for becoming debt free. Welcome to the show, Reagan and Ryan. Hey, Andy. Hi there, Andy. I am so glad you guys are here to inspire us today. So talk to us about how you accumulated this $40,000 of debt in the first place. So great question. We definitely started our marriage with debt, with Mm -hmm. car debt. At that moment, we just didn't really realize that car debt was a debt, like didn't register. I think it's just dumb and young (laughs) when we bought our cars and kind of just like how we were raised and grew up. Mm -hmm. So that's how we started. I never really had credit card debt until we got married. Mm -hmm. And then once we got married, it was four months after that we bought a house and finances were a little bit tighter and the credit card was very convenient. So I actually had to get a credit card for work and it made it very convenient to be like, oh, we need this, or we're running low, we'll just swipe the card and pay it off later, mm-hmm. which doesn't always happen. <laughs> and then we bought furniture. <laughs> Again, another one of those where you're like, oh, we'll just finance it. Mm-hmm. It's fine. We need a new couch. We need a new bed, even though we had a perfectly good couch. Yeah. It was perfectly a, good bed. <laughs> it was a lot of careless spending. You know, new married couple, we want all the new stuff for the house, the new stuff in general. Just not really thinking about it, just swiping the card and put ourselves in a little bit of a hole. It's tough though, right? You get the house and you want to get all the stuff to fill the house. You know, you want to make it look nice. So I know exactly where you're coming from for sure. How did the $40,000 break down? Was it mostly cars, mostly credit cards? How did that work? So the majority was definitely cars. Mm -hmm. So we have a little bit nicer style. (laughs) Um, Guilty. Uh, (laughs) And so that was definitely our biggest debt Mm -hmm. for sure. And then his credit card, credit card was the got one. very high. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we like to swipe that one a little bit yeah, more. That um, one was definitely in second place. Mm-hmm. And then the furniture, we got nice furniture, and it was a close third place to the credit card. So that was it was up there, too. Yeah. And then from there, it was uh, we had, I think, four credit cards mm-hmm. at the time, four or five. Mm-hmm. So that kind of you know, here and there, but then we also had our cell phones, yeah. which is also another one that we didn't put together as a debt mm-hmm. until we started paying off debt. And we realized we're paying a phone bill, yeah. not just for the service, but f- to pay off the phone as well. Yeah. So we paid that off and then we bought one with cash when mm-hmm. we had to get new ones. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you had all this debt. When was the moment you decided you wanted to get rid of it once and for all? We were a little bit hard headed. And sometimes it's a little harder to get things through. So we actually took Dave Ramsey's financial peace mm-hmm. class through our church for the second time. Mm-hmm. So it took two times to really dive deep in there. But I think what the biggest moment was, was when we bought our house and the credit card debt really started piling up and paying for it. We had a dog also. So it was just a lot of life changes. We got married. We bought a house. We bought a dog. Mm-hmm. We we're at that time kind of thinking about, starting a family in the near future in, you know, a year, eight months kind of thing. And so it was kind of that moment that we were like, we got to get this figured out because we're struggling at the beginning of every single month Mm -hmm. and we're pulling out of our savings or we're using a credit card Mm -hmm. to do that. And so I think that was the really big 
we can't keep living like this. Absolutely. And living so stressful and tight. Ryan, during this time that Reagan's talking about, what were your feelings about paying off this debt? It was definitely not my idea. Um, honestly, I was not on board at first. I was, you know, perfectly content with the way that we were living. And it, I just kind of had the mindset that I would have a car payment for the rest of my life. And I don't know why. Major props to my parents because they're really good with their finances. And I definitely wasn't seeing a bad pattern from them. It was just this weird mindset that I built up. I was like, everybody lives with consumer debt. It's just a part of life. That's how it's going to go. We're getting by, you know, and you know, we'll get pay raises as we you know, move along in our careers. We'll be fine. We can get nicer cars, too, on top of that. So I, I just had this, this mindset. Honestly, it was going through Dave Ramsey the second time and going in with this situation, with all of this debt that really started changing my mind and hearing other people's stories. And we have really good leaders in the class that we went through. And they were very motivational, and they really helped us out, helped us start getting on track. Um, so that's kind of what changed the mindset around. And then, of course, my beautiful wife here, she was constantly, you know, telling me, <laughs> we got to do this. We can't keep living like this. And it was a combination of things. But to answer your question, I was not on board. I hear you. That's, uh, that's real. I'm glad to hear that you guys had a great experience with Financial Peace University. I, for the last few years, I've been a coordinator at my local church. And that class can do wonders for sure. So Reagan, this is a very, very important question that uh, picks up on what Ryan was just talking about. What did you say or do to get Ryan on board with this debt-free plan? Yeah, so we took it, like I said, for the second time. First time we were dating and here's kind of whatever, I'm going to do it for you because we're dating. Mm -hmm. Um, Still on that kind of win me over phase, I think. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) (laughs) For the second time, again, that was a lot of life changes. We were married and it actually wasn't just very seamless conversation. It had a lot of pushback and it was more of me saying, we're doing this, like we have to do this. We're going to do it. Mm -hmm. We're going to sign up no matter what. And there was a lot of resistance and the more we talked about it and just really talking about what do we want our future to look like? We're struggling at the beginning of every single month where our savings is going down rapidly. Like we didn't save to put a down payment on our house to not be able to live free and enjoy life. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of the moment where we were like, okay, we're going to do this. And I even going in that first couple weeks, I think he was still really resistant to mm-hmm. it and kind of like, this is dumb. I don't need to be here. Mm-hmm. And then I travel for work and it happened to be on Tuesdays. And he's like, I didn't even want to do this and you're going to be gone. And without me being there, I think he got a lot more out of it too. Mm-hmm. So I think it was just kind of giving him that extra push mm-hmm. that made it happen. Really just kind of about, forcing us to do it. Thinking about the future for sure. That was really inspirational for me because I wasn't thinking about that at the time. Um, you know, I was living in the now just, you know, kind of coasting by not thinking about like, what's it going to be like if we bring a kid into this kind of poor financial picture. And that really triggered in my mind as well. We got to do something. Ryan, what were some of the things that you were worried about having to give up when it came to this debt free plan? I'm I'm a shopaholic, to be honest, Andy. I really am when it comes to clothes, when it comes to car parts. I'm I'm a big car nut. Um, I've got an old car that I'm fixing up. So I thought that I would lose that freedom to put money into my project car and other things on top of that. Just I I felt like there would be a, a strangle around my life that would just, my life would look different. Like I wouldn't be able to enjoy life, honestly. And it's been the complete opposite. Since then, I was totally off. You know, through budgeting and looking at our finances, I'm still able to set aside money for this car. And also, we were able to pay down debt at the same time. It's just I wasn't thinking about these things. I wasn't thinking about the broad financial picture. And then when we finally did, I was like, oh, okay, well, it's it's not that bad. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, we'll be living on the street because we have no money because it's all going to debt. You know, it, it was nothing like that. I was just kind of blown it, blown it out of proportion in my own mind. When you originally heard the term live on a budget, what kind of feelings did that bring up for you? I was scared. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I thought that that meant we wouldn't be able to enjoy life. We wouldn't be able to do things on the weekend. I, I wouldn't be able to, you know, go out to lunch at work and stuff like that. I just, I thought that we'd be sitting at home 
every day doing nothing because all of our money was being put into this budget and going to something, going to debt, going to savings. You know, I, I really just thought I wasn't going to enjoy life. I think the words he used were, we're going to be in financial prison. Yes, that is the phrase I used, financial prison. <laughs> she'll, never let, she'll never let me forget that. <laughs> I get it. Those are real feelings, though. Those are real thoughts. That's And that's what a lot of people go through when they're walking this path. I think it's really important to have these conversations for couples and to have it at the beginning of your relationship. So kudos for you guys for doing what you have done. It's, it's It creates some clarity and some direction in your marriage. What were some of the first steps you took to eliminate this $40,000 of debt from your lives? I think the first step and the first step everybody needs to take in trying to figure out your debts and trying to figure out how to pay them down is put together a budget and put together a solid budget. So for us, that wasn't a monthly budget. We actually do a quarterly budget so we can have that rolling budget and see how are we really standing because it was at the beginning of every month. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of restraint. And we actually, I, I just want to note that we actually do a weekly budget, but we project it out for the entire quarter, if that makes sense. It's kind of a rolling budget. And that's one of my biggest pieces of advice is do what works best for you. There's all these different tools and things out there and these different you know, ways to go about this. But we figured out what works best for us. And I was the one that was you know, holding us back. But I saw this and big props to Reagan because she actually created this budget that we're using just in an Excel spreadsheet. And it has you know, changed our lives immensely. Mm-hmm. I was on board when I saw this thing because I was just impressed. And it made sense to me. Somebody was very hesitant at first. But... This budget that we created, it it was life changer for us, for sure. That's definitely the first step. First step. And that's another advice is like putting together a budget that if you're married, makes sense to both of you. Mm -hmm. Because I had a budget that I understood and it went way over Ryan's head. Mm -hmm. But when we put this one together, we both understood it. We were both on the same page and can look at it and really see where we were. Mm -hmm. So then in that budget, we looked and have looked around in it to see where are we standing? So we have all these debts. Now, do we have any extra money floating around in our budget that we can put to debt? And with that, we were actually able to find $1,500 a month to put to debt. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was huge in being able to pay off our debts faster. And then to go into step three, I guess that would be, was creating the debt snowball. So we definitely started with the smallest step first and we created another Excel spreadsheet. So I'm the nerd Mm -hmm. and I love Excel. So I put together that Excel spreadsheet that had our smallest debt all the way to the biggest, what the amount was, what that minimum payment was, and then what that debt snowball would be. So as we continued to pay it off, we knew how much we were going to pay and then projected out into the future when we would have that debt paid off, Mm -hmm. what month, and of what year, mm-hmm. <laughs> which happened to be, you know, 2019. So we that was kind of our first initial step of here's the game plan. Here's where we can see that light at the end of the tunnel. Because I think that's important to have that in pen and paper or whatever it is that works for you. Mm-hmm. So you can see we don't just have all these debts and we're not just like throwing money at it. But this is when we project to be done with each debt. And this is when we project to be done with all of our debt Mm -hmm. because it gives you that sense of I can attack this and I can tackle it Mm -hmm. without just having darkness and not knowing where you're at. For sure. Okay. You, you said you just found an extra $1,500. How did you do that? (laughs) It's a great question. We got that question a lot when people were like, well, how do you just find money in your budget? Well, that's the funny thing about budgets is you have a place for every single penny, every single dollar has a home. So when we put together that budget and allocated how much fun money are we going to get? How much money are we going to put to dining? How much do are we really living off of? That's how we found it. Because before we just had careless spending. Mm-hmm. We were just swiping the card. We were going on about life, doing our thing. And that's how we were always finding ourselves in a bind as we were spending a lot of miscellaneous money. We would spend $300 on dining. Who needs to spend $300 on dining? Not a couple. (laughs) We just don't. (laughs) Um, So that's really how we found, found, I guess you could say that extra 1500 is just being really diligent of where our money is 
and then setting aside and really looking at it and saying, can we live on one less paycheck? Okay, we can't do that exactly, but how much less can we live off of? Mm-hmm. And that's what we did. Mm-hmm. And just really identifying, you know, where every dollar goes. I think that's the biggest thing because once we did that and we identified, you know, the essentials, the different budget categories, we saw that there was fifteen hundred dollars that we didn't need for these different categories. So we essentially found an additional fifteen hundred dollars that we didn't know that we were carelessly spending before, mm-hmm. and that could go straight to debt. And I think to kind of piggyback off of that and something, a really big part that's played into our lives and made a huge life changing for us was the envelope system. Mm -hmm. Because yes, we can budget $100 a week or a month, whatever, for a category and use the card and just swipe it and be like, oh, I went over a little bit and not realize how much more you go over. But when you have that cash, you physically have it and you're seeing it go out and you can see that you have that $5 left, it makes a huge difference in your spending. Absolutely. And it makes you realize, okay, so we we can do this. We just went out to eat too much this week. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that was actually a really big game changer, I think, in our budget, not just only having a budget, but actually having cash. Mm -hmm. Okay. As you were creating your budget, did you guys have any disagreements on the individual categories or how much you were allocating? Do you want to talk about your thoughts? I thought every single category was too low, to be honest. You know, I think we can all determine that that's going to be my thought. It was initially, but you know, after going through it a couple times, a couple months, I realized that the the numbers did make sense. And it took a little bit of experimenting. You're not going to know initially what dollar amount needs to go to what category until you actually kind of go through it. So we had a couple experimental months. Um, but I, I certainly was a little hesitant in that. I was like, how in the world are we going to live off this amount at the grocery store? It's not possible. We're not going to be able to go out to eat with this amount of money each week. There's no way. That's not enough. But you know what? We made it work. Reagan really helped me understand that we could. And just kind of through experimenting and figuring out what worked best for us. I mean, there's a level of compromise that went into it as well, mm-hmm. where Reagan had a number, I had a number, and sometimes we had to meet in the middle. So a lot of compromise, a lot of just making sure we were on the same page. Um, But I I certainly thought, you know, we weren't going to be able to survive. There's no way. (laughs) So from what I'm hearing, though, it sounds like you two didn't reduce your spending that much. You just took control of your spending. Do I have that right? That's That's absolutely correct. The best word you could use for it is we took control of it. Absolutely. Because we were out of control. We had no sense of how much we were spending. And it was so inconsistent. Mm -hmm. We'll be back to the show after a word from our sponsors. We all know we should be investing our money, but sometimes we have more questions than we have answers on where to invest our money. Well, Facet Wealth is here to help. Facet Wealth is a group of CFP professionals that are dedicated to helping you achieve your financial goals. They provide comprehensive one-on-one advice over the phone or through video conference. This way, you can get the financial support you need from the comfort of your own home. Now, you've heard me talk about the importance of working with a fiduciary, right? That's exactly what Facet Wealth provides. The only CFP professionals with no commissions and no assets under management. To learn more and get a free, no-commitment, 30-minute consultation with a trusted professional, Go to marriagekidsandmoney.com slash facet wealth. That's marriagekidsandmoney.com slash facet wealth. F A C E T W E A L T H. With facet wealth, you get fee only financial advice from the comfort of your own home. One of the single best ways to protect your family is with term life insurance. This way, you're ensuring your family is financially covered if the unexpected occurs. Bestow is an excellent life insurance partner that makes this process simple and easy. They use data to remove the doctor visits and paperwork involved with the traditional life insurance process. And you can apply from anywhere in just minutes. Unlike some of their competitors, you'll get an approval response right away. Check this to-do off your list today, my friends. Get your free and convenient quote by visiting marriagekidsandmoney.com slash bestow. That's marriagekidsandmoney.com slash bestow. B-E-S-T-O-W. With bestow, you can have peace of mind in just minutes. 
Thanks for taking the time to consider our sponsors, everybody. Let's jump back into the show. Did you two increase your income during this period as well? Yeah. So on this one, this is actually just a really crazy topic. So we both, we tithe. Um, so we give 10% to the church every month, every paycheck. Mm -hmm. And again, that was something that was really hard for Ryan to say, like, we are giving so much money to the church. We could be doing X, Y, and Z with this money. And as I saw it that way, I also knew like we have to be good stewards with our money and we can't accomplish our goals if we don't let God be in control of our money at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Like tithing 10% is not going to break the bank if we're living correct. And so that was a big thing. And we stayed consistent in that, which then our hard work, not only in tithing and trusting God with our money, but our hard work at our jobs, we both ended up getting pay raises. Ryan got Mm -hmm. a lot of promotions. I think he got like three promotions last year. I was, you know, really working hard and there was something in the back of my mind, you know, this was the budget and getting out of debt. There was a sense of motivation coming from that, right? You know, perform better at work. And on top of that, and it was just perfect timing in that I, I completed a project a couple of years ago and the company awarded me some internal shares and they actually came due this year. So that was a very large chunk of money that we got in our pocket that we're able to allocate to debt. So we definitely did get an increase in income. And I'll also say that Reagan, she took a lot of time out of her day to kind of work on a side hustle. So she was bringing in a little bit of extra income as well that we were putting right to debt too. That's incredible. Ryan, would you say that when you were feeling in control of your money, like during this process, feeling like financially fit, it made you a better employee? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it it gives you a sense of motivation. If you've got a financial goal, I mean, the way that, you know, you get pay raises and stuff and you get more income is performing well in your job. So there is something in the back of my mind, at least, that tells me, you know, the, the better I perform, the more money I can make, you know, the, the better life I can give us and our family. So I absolutely agree with you in that that sense is there for sure. Well, it sounds like you two were in sync the entire time. Were there any moments that you were thinking like, man, she is crazy? <laughs> or Reagan, were there any times where you were thinking, man, this guy is hopeless? <laughs> the she's crazy sounds kind of familiar. And honestly, we had some, we definitely had some moments throughout the process where we were not in agreement, especially, you know, in times where we were getting these big bonuses. I'm like, you're telling me that I have to put this amount of money to debt. Mm -hmm. There's no benefit for me there. I'm not getting something cool out of this. It's going to debt. You're telling me, and we had some, some knockdown drag outs in those conversations. And those were definitely hard because we both got two very large bonuses. I, my bonus was like twice as much as yours. It was huge. And I put probably 90% of my budget to Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But I also don't shop. I just don't care for it. And there's not really much that I want to spend my money on. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do with a thousand dollars. That just blows my mind. What will I do with a thousand dollars? Ryan, on the other hand, like I can blow a thousand dollars in a day. Give it to me. I will do it. (laughs) (laughs) And so we got these two huge bonuses. And so that definitely had moments of like, I put this much money to it. I put all of my, cause I in sales. So I also, get commissions every month. And so I put 90, 75 to 90% of all of my commissions to debt as well. And so when he gets that one big bonus, I'm like, you need to do this with it. It has to go here. And that took a lot of talking conversations for him to say, you get commissions consistently. Like you, this is something you get this extra money all the time. And this is a once or twice a year kind of thing that I get. Um, and very rare. So that was really definitely moments of like tension Mm -hmm. and frustration. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also think it was times that like God was like, Hey, you waited a year for the Reagan, you waited a year for this bonus, Ryan, you waited two years for this bonus. And it's crazy how he works in the sense of his timing is perfect. Cause had Ryan gotten that two years ago, it would have been gone. <laughs> it, would have been, it would have been gone. None of it would have gone to debt. Yeah. It just would have been blown. Absolutely. And even for me, I was thinking like, what am I going to do with this thousands and thousands of dollars? Like, this is insane. I could buy a car with this and just so overwhelmed with that money that when we got it, it was like we knew instantly what to do and mm-hmm. had a piece about it. Mm-hmm. So I think that that kind of like balances it out. But then like other moments of tension and just like, times where we just wanted to give up. I think it kind of happened monthly. There was times where you're just like, we, I want 
this, or we could be spending this 1500 here instead of putting it to debt. Mm -hmm. Are you in a lot of the times Ryan was like, what, like, are you sure we're going to be good? Like, how do you know? And so being able to, because again, I put together the budget, I'm really the nerd. And so I manage it and control it. But being able to sit down together and say, okay, here's the budget. Here are our numbers. Like we are going to be okay. And just being a team and sitting down instead of just arguing about it. And both of us being able to see it gave him a peace of mind Absolutely. and took away my frustrations. And like, you're not listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I definitely think it's be a team. If you're going to get in those arguments and you start feeling yourself fighting, step away, yeah, just put it away. Work. It's not worth it. That budget's still going to be there. You can look at it later. Mm-hmm. So definitely have those moments. <laughs> well, those are the real conversations. Everyone has different motivations. This conversation reminds me a lot of the relationship I have with my wife. And that's I think that's why I'm having so much fun here. <laughs> so tell me about the moment you became debt free. What did that mean to you guys? Well, <laughs> we're not very good at celebrating. We looked at each other and paid off. So when he paid off his car, he goes, boom. And I was like, so, so that's what we get. <laughs> he was like, boom. Like it was like the double finger, like gun, like boom. And I was like, all right, on to the next one. Okay. High five. We did it. And then when we paid off that final debt, I think there was a lot of nerves. Like, mm-hmm. okay, is this the right, like, do we, are we actually good? Are we actually settled in with all of our money? So we were sitting on the couch and we were just like, and send. And we just kind of looked at it. And we looked at each other and we're just high five. High five. <laughs> and then we're like, so now what? Like, we got to do something. Well, we so do now something. what? So it wasn't immediately like, I think we were just in shock. Mm-hmm. Just immediate shock. Like, it wasn't this big like, oh my gosh, we did it. Or like praise. It was like, okay, let's go on about our night. Yeah. And then as it settled in, we ended up going on, I think, a nice dinner. Mm-hmm. Our anniversary was in May. So when we paid off our debt in June, we actually went on a trip to Scottsdale Mm -hmm. and paid cash for it. Uh, So that was really fun. Brian's obviously super into cars. So we got to go to the car show he wanted to go to and really just celebrate and be stress-free and really do what Dave Ramsey says, like, don't bring your vacation home with you. Mm -hmm. Like we went on vacation, we enjoyed it. And now we don't have to like stress about it. Yeah, so that we're, was, pretty, we're pretty laid back. I mean, it wasn't anything crazy. We just did what we wanted. And now, you know, life is a lot different not having all that debt. And that was the ultimate goal. Um, and we didn't want to, you know, do something crazy and get more debt. <laughs> we, uh, you know, we wanted to be smart about it. But we got to go on a nice weekend trip. And that was kind of the, the celebration for us. And yeah. we just moved on from there. I Thought think about that was kind set. of, yeah, we had a next step. But instead of just jumping directly into that and not having a break, we just said, okay, for this month, we're not going to do put that money into an emergency fund. Like, we're going to use this and we're going to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Like, we're going to enjoy this money just for one month. We're going to do the things we want to do, and then we'll get back on track. Yep. Ryan, what did you do to enjoy things that month? Um, uh, what did we do? I mean... Honestly, this has been a real lifestyle change for me. I'm not the big spender I was before. I, I'm you know, not out going shopping like I used to. I'm not buying all these unnecessary things. It, it honestly was a major lifestyle change for me. So I can't even think of anything off the top of my head that really stands out as doing something crazy. I think just the things that we did to celebrate along the way was with the bonuses we received, especially for him to be able to use that he got a couple bonuses or there was some, another reason. And so he bought the MGB. Mm-hmm. Um, so he got that. We paid cash for it. Mm-hmm. That's my old car. It's a 1976 MG. It's a little British roadster. And this kind of goes back to the point of, you know, doing what works best for you. So while we were paying down debt, you know, I still was able to get this car. It was a really good deal. And, you know, we weren't, you know, a, going exactly by Dave Ramsey's steps, but this is what worked best for us. So, and also, to keep Ryan happy throughout the process, <laughs> honestly. So it was a heck of a deal and it, it didn't put a major strain on any of our progression. So, and it kept me happy and it was almost like a compromise if you think about it. Um, but that's my old car. And so I, I might've got some parts and stuff in whenever we paid off the debt, but 
honestly, it was a, it was like a, a supercharger. Yeah, I did get a supercharger <laughs> for it, so that was kind of cool. Um, but uh, it was, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I, lifestyle has changed a lot for me throughout this process. I'm not the spender I used to be. No, I mean, I think just there wasn't really much, like we don't, it doesn't take a lot to make us happy. <laughs> We're very laid back, you know, having a movie night with pizza mm-hmm. is really kind of like our way of celebrating mm-hmm. Or taking the car out on a drive, mm-hmm. just enjoying it with the top down on a nice, cool, cool-ish. Texas not, night. Yeah. <laughs> Texas night is like our way of just like enjoying life and celebrating. And we were talking earlier, and I was telling her, I was like, honestly, we've kind of developed a minimalist mindset mm-hmm. after this. You know, the the junk and the unnecessary stuff, we don't really think about it anymore. We're not going out and buying stuff that we don't need. We're not buying it in insane amount of decorations for the house and we've got what we need we're in a really good place right now so we're we're not gonna you know the the spending lifestyle is behind us behind me at least um so a a major lifestyle change so nothing crazy to celebrate i mean i didn't do anything too much I, i just i didn't have the want to honestly that is incredible well i understand you guys have some big news coming up can you talk to us about that we are bringing our first baby into the world. Um, so baby Whitlock, number one, yep. will be making his or her, we don't know yet, appearance in February. Yep. And one of the things that we're doing to prepare for it is what, we're obviously building an emergency fund. Mm-hmm. That's super important to us. Our goal is the six month. Mm-hmm. But just like with debts, we celebrate little wins at a time. So going to celebrate that three month, making that be our goal. Mm-hmm. But on top of that, we're building a baby fund for us to accumulate a solid fund for that baby's first year or, you know, those unexpected expenses until we really get our feet underneath us a little bit with (laughs) what are the expenses of a child? Because we're clueless. We know how to pay for a dog, but that's about it. (laughs) Um, And so. So similarly to how we were paying off debt, you know, the bonuses, the commissions, that money is going to the emergency fund and it's going to the baby fund. We want to be as prepared as possible financially. So when we do have the baby and, you know, we have unexpected expenses, we can be prepared and not put ourselves and the newest member in any sort of financial Mm -hmm. bind. Exactly. So that debt money that was going to debt, that 1500 is actually now going to savings and Mm -hmm. we're splitting it right now between savings and baby fund. And Mm -hmm. as commissions come through, we kind of allocate correctly how Mm -hmm. we feel is best. These are all really important goals. I am so happy for you two and where you are in your life right now. You're a debt free couple and you're about to bring your first child into the world. Congratulations on this moment in your life. That's so cool. If there's somebody listening right now and saying, I want that, I want to do exactly what they're doing, exactly like the Whitlocks, what advice would you have for them today? I think the biggest thing is make a plan. Have an action plan and stick to it. But then also having an accountability partner. So if you're married, get on the same page. Talk about it. Have those budget meetings. Have budget parties. Make it fun. Make it exciting. If you know you're going to get in an argument and you know there's that tension, go to a public place. Go hang out at Starbucks. Sit down because you're not going to yell and scream at each other while you're in a public place. Mm -hmm. More than likely. (laughs) Um, So I think that's really big. And if you're single, because I'm sure there's a lot of single people out there that may be listening also, have an accountability partner. Find someone who you look up to or who's someone who's in the same situation as you, who's not going to let you veer off, Mm -hmm. who's going to be on top of you and say, Hey, like keep going and celebrate those wins with you. I think those are two of the big ones, but then also just giving yourself grace. You're going to mess up. You're going to accidentally swipe that credit card. You're there's going to be times where you do something and you're thinking, I shouldn't have done that. How do I get out of this? fall down, get back up and just keep trucking right along. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the big thing is just have grace upon grace upon grace on yourself and don't get down just because you messed up. I heard something one time that was like, if you don't brush your teeth one night, you don't just look at it and say, Oh, well I didn't brush my teeth. I'm never going to do it again. I'm just going to stop there. The same things with the budget, the same things with all different areas of your life. If you mess up one time, you do, you know, don't do it a hundred percent. Don't just give up. Just keep going and just trust the process. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I would say compromise. That's the biggest thing for me. 
Um, there's always going to be somebody who's not fully on board at first for the most part. Compromise, talk through it. If you get mad, take a step back, you know, reconvene the next day. Um, but compromise, get so that you're on the same page and then just be aggressive from there. And make sure you get your MG along the way. Right, buddy? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I love it, man. That's awesome. So I know you two are big fans of Mr. Dave Ramsey. I am too. His uh, book that he wrote, The Total Money Makeover, that was a huge deal for me as I was starting my marriage and becoming a father for the first time. Was there a book or blog or podcast or course or any other recommendation you guys have that inspired you on this debt-free journey of yours? Honestly, your podcast. Thank you. <laughs> it, it really is. Like, you came into our lives in the middle of this journey, and it was just extra motivation that we needed. Uh, I remember being on a road trip and hearing it for the first time, and then we were just amazed at what we were hearing. We've taken a lot from your podcast. You know, we opened up an account with Ally. I remember you talking about Ally Financial. We've got some savings there now. Um, but honestly, I would say Dave Ramsey's course and your podcast have been the two biggest things that have impacted this journey for us. Absolutely. Uh-huh. I th- thank you very much. I didn't. I didn't mean to softball that up there or anything <laughs> like that. I really appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's definitely the honest truth, and I can tell you, you know. We don't go on a road trip without listening to your podcast for a few hours. Yeah. <laughs> you just warmed my heart. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, guys. <laughs> well, where's the best place for people to connect with you if they have a question? I know you guys are hooked up on Instagram. Is that the best place? Yeah. That is the best place to follow us, um, connect with us. We are, I'm at Miss Reagan Whitlock, and he is at R Whitlock 88. Excellent. Well, I'm going to put that information in the show notes for people to connect with you. Thank you both for connecting today. Your story is incredibly inspiring and I'm I'm just so glad we connected. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You, Andy. Now, that couple has a bright future ahead of them, man. Debt-free and they're about to become parents. That is so cool. Here are my top 3 takeaways from my conversation with Ryan and Reagan Whitlock. Number one, think about your family's future. To pay off five figures of debt, you need to get motivated. Take some time to think about what kind of family you want to have and what your life looks like in the next five to ten years or what you want it to look like in the next five to ten years. And focus on how your financial situation can help you get there. Number two, create a plan that works for both of you. When you're paying off debt as a couple, it can be easy to say, here's what we're going to do, honey, and follow my plan and all's going to be well. (laughs) It's a lot harder to say, here's the plan. What do you think about it? What would you change? How does this fit for you? I really like how Reagan and Ryan found opportunities for compromise along the way. Would Reagan have gone out and bought that MG? Probably not. But you know what? It was very important for her husband and This is a partnership, right? And as young parenthood approaches for them, that time spent on compromise, conversation, and partnership, it's going to help them immensely in the years to come. Number three, use the debt snowball. Reagan talked about how she would track her debts from smallest to largest and then pay off the smallest one first. This gave her and Ryan a quick win and kept them motivated to keep pushing forward until, as they said, boom. (laughs) It was all gone. Reagan and Ryan, thank you so much for sharing your win with us today. Your commitment to each other and your future is going to inspire somebody today listening, and you've definitely inspired me. Thank you. As a quick reminder, this show is for entertainment purposes only, my friends. Be sure to seek out a professional for your specific financial situation. Before we go for the day, I'd like to ask you to do any one of these three things to support this show. Number one, join the Marriage, Kids, and Money community. It's a bi-weekly email that I send out to keep you in the know about some upcoming meetups, latest blog posts, things like that. And you can join up at marriagekidsandmoney.com slash playbook and you'll get my free ebook, The Young Family Wealth Playbook, just for joining. And the second thing, number two, subscribe to this podcast in your favorite podcast player. And then the last thing, number three, share this episode with a friend who's looking to pay off their debt with their spouse, just like Reagan and Ryan. 
You can find this show and all the links and resources mentioned at marriagekidsandmoney.com slash session 153. That's session 153. And if you are new to the show, I'd highly recommend you check out session 116, the 10 steps to young family wealth and happiness. You can find that at marriagekidsandmoney.com slash session 116. It is a great place to start. In the spirit of growth and inspiration, I'm going to end the show with a quote today from Unknown. True love stands by each other's side on good days and stands closer on bad days. In good times and bad, my friends. Carpe diem. 